Good morning. Welcome to our, good morning. <laughs> I'm waiting for this to pick up. Good morning. Am I on, Kim? There. I wasn't hearing myself. <laughs> Charlene is up here. Yes, we hear you. <laughs> oh, me. Um, this morning, I have an announcement to make that Deb Bickerstaff has brought me. Um, you can see over on the right all of the backpacks and school supplies, all sorts of good things that have been collected, and um, we're going to dedicate those this morning. Deb said that this particular scripture spoke to her. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. You all have been worshiping with actions in bringing in your donations. <clears throat> Last March, in the Logos program, the youth began to collect backpacks and school supplies for Catherine Cobb was the idea. Um, it was that these supplies would be collected then in the fall when school started up again, they would be donated. Um, but some children are uprooted during the year and school supplies are always needed. Announcements were made in the newsletter and many in the congregation gathered and gathered and gathered until <laughs> they saved this much. Uh, the items uh, have been sitting there waiting through the COVID shutdown and we want to go ahead and get them donated. At this point, there are so many donations that um, we're going to divide them and not send them just to one charity. They will be donated still to Catherine Cobb, but also to associated charities. So thank you for your generosity Thank you for your patience in sticking with this project. And Deb, thank you to all the Logos folks who uh, got the ball rolling. I want to welcome Phil back. We are so glad you're feeling okay. We missed you. I told him after a Sunday, of you all having to put up with me and just sing an acapella, you would appreciate him even more when he returned. Pastoral concerns that I want to share with you. Loretta's surgery went very well. So she is feeling much better. And I hope that you got word yesterday the luncheon for Sue Wing's family had been canceled. Tracy had tested positive for COVID, so they needed to push it further out. And that has been rescheduled for Saturday, May the 8th, still the same time, 11 to 1, down in Fellowship Hall. Okay. I think that's all of the announcements and pastoral concerns, and we're ready for the Christ light.
Remember you are baptized and be thankful. We are ready to pass the peace with one another. Remember we start like this. Peace be with you and then to one another and also with you. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Behold what manner of love our God has poured out upon us. That we should be called the children of God. We are not yet what we should be. But we know we are made in the image of God. And now the hymn, Rejoice the Lord is King. And now let's say the prayer of adoration together. God of Abraham and Sarah, by your grace, we have been made with them, your beloved children. You have given us breath to praise you. You have given us eyes to behold your glory surrounding us. You have given us words to proclaim your forgiving love. We, we declare, declare this morning that you alone are Lord and give thanks for Christ's redeeming love. Amen. As we prepare to hear God's word, join me in prayer. Eternal Easter God, help us to see the possibilities you set before us as your children when we turn from sin and live by your truth. As we open your word, open our eyes to your presence, open our ears to your call, open our hearts to your love, that our faith might be strengthened and our commitment might be renewed. In Christ we pray. Amen. In just a moment, uh, Bonnie is going to read our scripture for this morning from 1 John, 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 7. In this passage, John declares that God's love for us is so great that we are called God's children. The focus is on being children of God as opposed to being children of darkness. Our sins have been forgiven and we have a new identity because of God's great love for us. Listen to God's holy word. Psalm 
See what love the Father has given us, that we shall be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or knows him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, not just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord, the word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. Thank you, Bonnie. So sometimes the most difficult part of sermon crafting for the preacher is coming up with a title. I'm often deciding on a sermon title for the bulletin on Wednesdays when I haven't yet done all my studies for writing a sermon. But I had fun this week. Did you even notice the sermon title? What did you think we might be considering this morning? Bonnie wanted to clarify when I first saw her arrive. We are talking about sin today, aren't we? (laughs) But I could have gone with singing as my S word. Right? That's a good S word. And I could have connected it to make a joyful noise before the Lord. Maybe my subject could be souls this morning. There's a good S word for a Sunday morning. I wonder how many of you questioned whether I was going to go off the rails, and sex would be my topic for today. Actually, in our society, (laughs) um, (laughs) sex has been mixed up and messed up as a uh, a healthy understanding of sex. And that might be an important topic for preaching some morning, but not for today. My S word for this morning, indeed, Bonnie, is sin. I'll admit it's not a real popular theme for preaching these days. Well, actually, <laughs> it's, it's a much too popular topic in our society, but people don't like to talk about it. Maybe this is just residual from last week's Holy Humor Sunday, but someone sent me this joke this week and I just hooted. Then I realized, hey, I could make that fit in today's topic of sin. So bear with me if you are over doing jokes because I've got one more. There was a Scottish tradesman named Jock who was a painter. He was very interested in making as much money as he could. So he often would thin down his paint to make it go just a wee bit further. As it happened, he got away with this for some time, but eventually the Presbyterian Church decided to do a big restoration job of a rather large uh, building that they owned So Jock put in a bid, and because his price was so competitive, he got the job. And so he set about preparing to do the job. He set up the scaffolding, 
bought the paint, and I'm sorry to say, thinned it with paint, his paint with turpentine. Well, Jock was up on the scaffolding, painting away. The job was nearly done, when suddenly there was a huge clap of thunder and the skies opened up, the rain pouring down, washing the thin paint from all over the church, knocking Jock from the scaffolding to land on the church lawn among the gravestones. Jock was thankful to be alive, and he felt like Almighty God himself was passing judgment on him, and so Jock cried out, Oh God, forgive me! What should I do? That's when God's voice boomed from the thunder. Repaint! Repaint! And thin no more. <laughs> You're kind to laugh. <laughs> we tend to make light of our sinfulness. Or we try to rationalize it. Have any of you, like me, said, Well, I I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Or... Well, at least I don't do such and such like so and so. Friends, whether we are willing to admit it or not, sin is alive and well in our lives. This morning, I want to acknowledge sin and to talk about it in an open, honest manner. The Bible takes sin very seriously with a keen awareness of how it underlies our life. There are few chapters in the Bible that do not contain some reference to what sin does to us. In the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, the generic Hebrew word for any kind of sin is avira. It literally means transgression or to go astray. But there are three different words for three different kinds of sin in the Hebrew language. Hata. Hata is a sin when you make a mistake, something that you didn't intend to do and it can be washed away. My Old Testament professor explained it as if you would come upon someone laying on the ground if you leaned over and touched them to check on them, only to find them dead, you would have sinned. In Jewish law, you would have touched someone who was unclean. And that would have been hata. The second kind of sin is avon. It, it literally means iniquity. This is the kind of sin that you do when you know something is wrong. You know you shouldn't do it, but you do it anyway. This kind of sin can be cleansed. The third is pasha. It literally means trespass. It's a sin done in rebellion. When we turn against God, it is as if we turn our backs on God and we do as we damn well please. Pasha sins can only be blotted out. In the end, sin is sin. And it permeates our lives. Unknown sin is sin. Willful sin is sin. Rebellious sin is sin. 
And the Bible calls us to repent and turn back to God, to confess our sins so that we might find mercy and forgiveness. I found this Scottish prayer of confession that touched me deeply. This Celtic confession names all the many ways that we sin. See what you think. To you, Lord, all hearts are open. Forgive our secret sins. Forgive our habitual sins. Forgive our unnoticed sins. Our sins of thought, word, and deed. All that we have left undone. Forgive our sins against ourselves. Our sins against others. Our sins against you. All where we have fallen short of your glory and not done what you have called us to do, forgive us. Amen. That about covers it, doesn't it? The Bible teaches us that the opposite of sin is faith. In Greek, faith, pistis, is based not on knowledge, but on relationship. That's what this passage that we read this morning is about. See what love the Father has given to us to be called the children of God. That's relationship. What we will be has not yet been revealed. That's ongoing relationship. What we know is this. We will be like him. That's long-term relationship. Sin is a real part of our lives, whether we are aware of it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not, whether we repent from it or not. We need to take sin seriously. But there is no need for self-flagellation. This is not a sermon about hellfire and brimstone. Yes, we are sinners, but sin no longer defines our lives. Yes, we are sinners, but <laughs> here's the thing. We are forgiven sinners. And that makes all the difference. In that is freedom and hope and the possibility of new life. Amen. We're ready for the offering to be brought up. If there's a deacon there, somebody back there. I didn't see them at first. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear loving and compassionate Father, thank you that you are our strength and our song. 
You fill our hearts with joy. May we give our offerings to you with gladness. Everything we have belongs to you, and we rejoice to give some of your abundant gifts back. Amen. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks this day that Jesus came without sin to take away our sin. We praise you for the good news of the Easter message, that in Christ, new life is possible. Send your spirit among us so that our lives might be centered on your love and mercy. Grant us a fuller sense of what is right and good and help us to live our best. What a wonderful gift is ours that we are called children of God. Like children, teach us to trust you daily as we seek your guidance, Lord. We know that we are not yet what we shall become. So mold us more closely to your image day by day. Deepen our love for your way and guide us as we seek to follow Jesus' teachings. Father, we bow before you a variety of people with a variety of needs and concerns. We give thanks that you know what is in our hearts. You know what we need to be whole and content. So fill us with your peace and help us to trust in your steadfast love for us. Lord, you call us to serve others, to offer your love and compassion to those around us. I give thanks this morning for the generosity of this congregation, for their willingness to take on a project, even if it extends beyond what we think it will take, for these backpacks, for warm socks and hats, for school supplies, for all the hands that have brought them in. We pray your blessing, not only on us, but on all the people who will receive these gifts. We hope, Lord, that we are making a difference in this community as we bring our gifts this morning. This morning we gather as your children. Continue to mold our lives in faith as together we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Jesus, Thy Boundless Love to Me.
too often, I think, <clears throat> we want to say, oh, our sin is not as bad as it really is. And I think what we want to say is we don't sin as much as we think we do, but sin permeates our lives. The good news I want you to hear this morning, the good news that I want you to take out into the world with you is our sin does no longer define us because we are beloved children of God. In him is mercy and grace. So go out, bearing good news into a hurting world, a sinful world. Go out. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good, good week. You too.